What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. We have another LC carbine in 10 millimeter video for you. Today's not going to be your typical fun video. This one is more of a cautionary video. I found a little bit something of a safety concern, and I have to share it with you today. So we're out here doing some velocity testing, getting some cool footage for you, getting you some good numbers, and we did notice something that's happening with this firearm. Now, I'm not going to make a huge deal about this. I'm not trying to bash Ruger or this firearm or anything like that. I just need to tell you about this because we are a no BS channel and we're not afraid to go ahead and tell you when something could be a little bit off about a firearm, especially when it comes to safety. Now, before I show you what I found on the carbine, I have to give you a little bit more information using these two pistols. Now, the first firearm we're going to take a look at is the Colt Delta Elite. That is a 5-inch 1911 chambered in 10 millimeter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and insert the magazine with a round in it, and I'm going to seat that magazine like you just saw. That's a Wilson Combat Magazine with a nice base plate. You can smack it into position, and you're noticing that the slide is not going home. Now, it might do that if this was very worn, and I would consider that a malfunction with the slide stop. But again, I can go ahead and smack that pretty hard, and nothing happens. If it were to close, which we can easily show you with this Glock, insert magazine, tap and close, that would be considered an inertial loading, and in my opinion, that's not a good thing. Now you can go back and forth. There's a lot of argument between whether that's okay, acceptable, not, if that's a worn parts issue, or if that was intended by the factory to happen like that. Sometimes you will get wear in some of these parts and they will go ahead and do it after some time after the gun's been broken in. But a lot of guns will do it right from the factory. And actually some people don't mind it because if you slam the magazine in and the, rail, and the slide goes closed, then you can immediately assume a shooting grip, get right out there and no problem. So just file that information away in your head, and now let's talk about the Ruger LC carbine, at least the 10 millimeter version. All right, now pointed in a safe direction, you'll notice that the bolt is locked back. So if this were like a Glock pistol, if we smack it, it should close, but it's not. It's not doing that at all. We can hit it pretty hard. I'll go ahead and drop it out, and I'll smack it in again. It does not close. If you did want to close the bolt, you would go ahead, and let me get this magazine out of here. You would go ahead and actuate that button right there. On the right side or on the left side, you would activate that button right there, closing the bolt. Now, I felt it was important to show you the guns with the inertial loading because those are pistols. And this, in my opinion, is pretty much a pistol inside of a rifle chassis almost. This thing is definitely more pistol, especially with these controls, than it is rifle. It's nothing like an AR-15, in my opinion. So we know we don't have an inertial loading problem with this firearm. However, once the firearm is loaded and there's an open bolt, that's when we seem to have a slight problem. So... I'm gonna show you something that I noticed. And I noticed it by messing with my buttstock. So it has an adjustable buttstock on this rifle. So let's say you were to pull it out and then do the typical thing of check it to make sure it's secure in the detent. Well, that thing just closed on you. The bolt closed and pushed a round into the chamber. The gun's now loaded and ready to shoot. So we'll get that one out, lock it back again, take the magazine out or drop it out. Now I'm gonna show you again just how easy that is to actuate that bolt. That takes nothing. So some of us could just set the rifle on the ground. So you throw it in the corner and there you go. Or let's just say you're in the condition where you have a magazine loaded, the bolt is open and you bump a piece of furniture or anything like that. And I'm not exaggerating it, it's that easy. Just checking your buttstock. A minute ago off camera when we were playing around with it, we got it to do it by closing the buttstock. There you go. Now there's gonna be two arguments that come up instantaneously and one of them is you should never be carrying the gun around in that condition to begin with. Well. Some people are going to, you know they're going to, and that's why I'm bringing this up, because it's going to happen. And then some people are going to say, well, yeah, but the gun's not going to fire. It can go ahead and do that. It's safe. Well, we don't know that. Mechanical problems do happen. This is a machine, and machines do fail. So there might be a bunch of safeties built into it to hopefully not let that happen. A slam fire is what we're talking about. But if anything else, you're not ready for the gun to be in that condition, and now it is. And I guess there's a third argument that's going to enter in really quick, and that's going to involve the AR-15. Now, people are going to immediately say that the AR-15 rifle does the exact same thing. What are you talking about? And I'm going to have to say I disagree. Yes, it will do that. It just does not do it that easily. So here we have a very well-used M&P Sport 1. It is that old. It's the Sport 1. It's been used. I can't tell you how many rounds, but this thing has been definitely used. So it is totally broken in. And as I start to bump on it, I can bump progressively harder. And then, it, yes, it will finally close the bolt. Like I said, all these parts are well-worn, and it does take a significant bump. And yes, you could manipulate the buttstock and get it to do it eventually. And after doing your typical extension of your buttstock, you could get it to trip by checking it. 
And it's not an HK, but you got to slap this thing to get it to do it. And now keep in mind, this rifle is only about 200 rounds old. I think that's all we have into it. No more than 200. So I'm assuming that its internal parts are only going to wear and get smoother, possibly creating this situation a little easier in the future. That's just speculation, but it's from previous experience with other handguns doing the inertial loading thing. Other than that, I really do like the rifle so far. It's interesting. The velocity increases are pretty significant. We have a lot more testing to do with this rifle, so make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. In the meantime, do whatever you want with this information. Just put it out there for you. Leave a comment below. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts about this particular situation. Thank you for watching this video, and until we see you next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting.